Well, good morning. This is Pastor Keith Hodges. I want to welcome you today to Liberty Church and what an honor and a joy it is to be here with you today. And today I'm coming to you from our recording studio. Uh, I had an opportunity to travel and begin to speak uh, last weekend uh, at a men's conference for NRP and then got to stay over and uh, just be a part of an awesome church in Louisiana and the work that they're doing and what a joy that was. And I really wanted to come back this week and just share part three of this message. I wanted to drill down on some of the truths that we've been talking about because I really believe this message, uh, Winning the War Within, has probably some of the greatest transformational power available that you and I can tap in to the truths of Scripture as we're looking to the Word of God and we can allow the truths of Scripture to change us. And this message, I believe, kind of unlocks one of the greatest truths that we can discover, and that is the transformational power of our minds, how that we think for as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So let me just go ahead and encourage you in something this morning. We've been talking about the book by Dr. Caroline Leaf, Switch On Your Brain. If you haven't gotten that book, I want to encourage you to get the book. It's a deep dive into these truths. And what we've been talking about how, is how that science is now continuing to prove Scripture and how that science and Scripture are working together because God made your body, right? You are fearfully and wonderfully made in the image and likeness of Jesus Christ and what a joy it is uh, to be transformed, the Bible says, into His image and into the likeness of God's Son as we follow the truths and practice the principles that God has given us in His Word. So look with me in Romans chapter 8, uh, verse 5 and 6. The Bible says, Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things, but those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. So letting your sinful nature or your flesh control your mind leads to death. But letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. One of our foundational truths for this study is simply this. Whoever wins the battle for your mind wins the war for your daily life. Whoever wins the battle for your mind wins the war for your daily life. And we went so far as to simply say this. You are either rich or poor. You are either healthy or unhealthy. You are either joyful or depressed. You are relationally fulfilled or relationally dysfunctional. You are victorious or defeated. And you are spiritual or carnal based on one thing, based on your thoughts. You are constantly moving toward the direction of your most dominant thoughts. And as as a man thinketh in his heart, the scripture says, so is he. If you are carnally minded, it brings death. But if you are spiritually minded, listen to what the scripture said, it brings life and peace. Your victory is found in winning the war within. It is the war for your thoughts and the war for your mind. Now let me just give you a couple reminders real quick. Remember that your mind, as we talk about your mind, we're really talking about the soulish realm. In your soulish realm, you are a mind, a will and emotion. You have a mind, a will and emotions. That's your soul. And when we talk about the mind, we're talking about that soulish realm where you think. And your mind is not your brain, right? Your mind is eternal, but your brain is temporal. Your brain is the control center for your body, but your mind is the control center for your brain. So your brain is ruled by your mind. Your thoughts, your feelings, and your choices, listen to this, create literally neurological pathways in your brain that create Create your habits and your health. And if you've not listened to part one and part two of this series on winning the war within, let me encourage you, check it out on our YouTube, on our Liberty Church app, on our Facebook page, and go back and listen to part one and part two because we do a deep dive into some of these truths that we're kind of wrapping up today in part three of this series. So we recognize that your thoughts literally change the shape of your brain and they literally determine how your DNA is expressed. It's called epigenetic modification, right? I said that that's probably one of the biggest words I've ever used on a Sunday morning from the pulpit. Epigenetic modification, which simply means this. It simply means that your DNA coding is changed based on the repetitive thoughts and choices that you make. And again, last week we showed a video that explained that. It took us in to a deep dive to understand that truth. Romans 12.2 is one of the greatest verses of Scripture in the Bible about the power of your thoughts. Listen to what it says. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed 
metamorphosized by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So we are transformed. Metamorphosize is the Greek word. It's metamorphos where we get our word metamorphosize. We are literally changed from the inside out as we renew our minds. When I change the way I think, it literally rewires my brain and recodes my DNA so I can live the life God has for me. So let's look at our first point for this week as we wrap this series up. Your spirit, your soul, which is your mind, will, and emotions, and your body, which includes your brain, are remarkable. Think about that. They are remarkable. You were created in the image of God, and you are an intelligent being capable of more than you ever imagined. You are fearfully and wonderfully made, the Bible says. And you are a spirit that has a soul and you live in a body and you are remarkable. You are made in the image and likeness of God. And not only are you an intelligent being, but you are capable of more than you ever imagined. And the reason you're capable of more than you ever imagined is because you were created in the image and likeness of God. Listen to Genesis 1, 27 and 28. It says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. Email, he created them. And then God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. You were created in the image of God. God has blessed you and ordained you. Listen to what it says, to be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, and have dominion over the earth. You were created to rule and reign with Christ. You were created as an intelligent being that is capable of doing the supernatural because because you were hardwired by God to declare His glory and be a representation of Jesus Christ in the earth. Listen to Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. In Matthew 17, 20, the disciples have come to Jesus and a man came to the disciples with a son who was demon possessed and they could not cast out the demon. And Jesus ends up casting out the demon and then the disciples come to him and say, Lord, why could we not cast out this demon? Listen to what he says. He said to them, because of your unbelief, for surely I say to you that if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move and nothing, listen to this last statement, nothing will be impossible for you. Nothing will be impossible for you. Jesus said, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say to that mountain, be thou removed, be cast into the sea, and it will obey you, and nothing will be impossible to you. Listen to me today. What is the problem? The problem was unbelief. Unbelief is rooted, listen to me, in toxic thinking. Unbelief is rooted in toxic thinking. What we believe is determined by the dominant thoughts that rule in our mind. Think about that. What we believe, what you really believe about yourself, what you believe about God, what you believe about others, what you believe about the world that we live in, what you really believe is determined by the dominant thoughts that rule in your mind. So the realization is simply this. Jesus revealed something. Jesus revealed that their unbelief was really the result of their toxic thoughts. And if we could literally begin to renew our minds, if we could literally begin to think like God thinks, and guess what? Nothing would be impossible for us. Because if I think like God thinks, then I will have faith in a living God who is able to do the impossible. And that's what you were created to do. You were created to live a life that represents God and that does the impossible because you were created in the image of a holy God. Let that sink in. You were created in the image of God and you are capable of more than you ever imagined by simply changing the way you think, reestablishing the beliefs that you have so that you can do the things that Jesus did. Can I get an amen from somebody today? How powerful that one thought is. How powerful, how transformational that simple revelation is. I was created in the image of God to be a representative of Jesus Christ in the earth. And if I change the way I think, I reestablish my belief and I can do what Jesus did because nothing is impossible to those who believe. Wow, what a powerful, powerful truth. So let's look at that next point. I want you to see this. We kind of move on through this study here today. Listen to this statement. God made your brain and your body because your brain is a part of your body. God made your brain and your body to perfectly reflect, listen to this, to perfectly reflect the condition of your soul. 
You were created to prosper. That's powerful. You were created to prosper. God made your body and your brain to perfectly reflect the condition of your soul. You were created to prosper. Look at 3 John chapter 1, verse 2. The, the Apostle John says this, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. The Apostle John understood something. He understood that my brain and my body perfectly reflect my soul. And he said, my prayer is that you would prosper and be in health just as your soul prospers, that there would be a magnification and there would be a glorification of God through the manifestation of your soul, your thoughts being revealed in your body. And the realization as we know this is true, think about it. Think about the root cause of depression. Depression is rooted in anxious, fearful, toxic thoughts. And out of those anxious, fearful, toxic thoughts, we become what we call depressed. The, the doctors literally say you can be diagnosed as clinically depressed. There is literally something going on in your brain that is affecting your body that is changing your life. Why? Because your body and your brain perfectly reflect your soul. The good news of this truth is simply this. If I renew my mind, I can rewire my brain and I can change my life. You can be set free from depression. You can be set free from anxiety. You can be set free from, from fear. You can be set free from poverty. You can be set free from the abuse and pain of your past by simply allowing God to renew your mind, to change the way you think by the transformational power of His Word and the Holy Spirit who lives on the end inside of us and you can become a new creation. You were created to prosper. When God made Adam and Eve, think about this, their bodies were a perfect reflection of their soul and their spirit, which were in unison with God. So God created them to physically experience the fullness of life that comes from being rightly connected to God. When Adam and Eve sinned, all of a sudden sin defiled the soul of man and it began to bring sickness and disease into our bodies. And all of a sudden we began to feel the ramifications of sin in our bodies because our minds and our spirits had been disconnected from God because of sin. Praise God for Jesus. Somebody put that in the chat box. Praise God for Jesus. He reconciled us. He restored us. He redeemed us and brought us back into right standing with the Father so we can receive the mind of Christ and begin to think the thoughts that God thinks so that our spirit Spirit and soul can begin to be reflected through our brain and our body and our lives. Come on, somebody, can be changed. What a glorious, glorious truth. Look at the rest of this statement. So God made your brain and body to perfectly reflect the condition of your soul. You were created to prosper. And this explains the battle within. Satan knows the only way to destroy your life is to attack your mind. If he can change the way you think, he can change the reality of your life. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 through 5. Paul says this, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. So we are at war. Did you hear that? There is a battle raging in your life. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought, think about that, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience for Christ. So the battle for your life is fought on the battlefield of your mind. You are constantly being bombarded from without with thoughts and ideas and images that want to distort the way you think and, the what you, and what you believe about yourself, about others, and about God. And all of a sudden, there's a war. And the war is for our thoughts. Paul says we got to bring every thought captive. we got to cast down the strongholds of the enemy. we got to cast down the arguments and the high things that exalt themselves, think about it, against the knowledge of God, the thoughts of God. Think about how many thoughts bombard your mind. Think about how the information of this world wants to counteract against the truth of Scripture and bring bring you and me into bondage. And so when you understand that our brain and our body is created to reflect our soul, you recognize why Satan has targeted our thoughts and attacked our minds so he can rob us of the fruit of living a life that brings glory and honor to Jesus.
So look at this next statement because this next statement uh, on our outline is probably one of the most powerful truths we're going to share with you today. And I hope you hear it and I hope you understand it. Listen to this. It takes 21 days of consistent, focused thought to create a new neurological pathway in your brain. This new pathway creates a new subconscious response to stress, anxiety, and negativity, allowing you to respond in a life-giving, godly way. It takes 21 days of consistent, focused thought to create a new neurological pathway. We've all heard it takes 21 to 30 days to make a new habit. It takes 21 to 30 days to break a habit. Well, guess what? Science is now proving what we have known from the truth of Scripture. We have to renew our minds. And it literally takes 21 days, 21 days of consistent, focused thought as I think, as I act, and as I feel. All of a sudden, those consistent, focused thoughts, feelings, and choices begin to literally create a new neurological pathway in my brain. Because why do I need a new neurological pathway in my brain? I need a new neurological pathway in my brain because I need to begin to operate at a subconscious level. We talked about this last week. We talked about how that when you get under stress, isn't it interesting that when you feel stress and anxiety or the negativity of this life, isn't it interesting how that you subconsciously respond without even consciously thinking about it? And we know we do that because how many times have you responded in a way that immediately after you responded, you regretted doing, why did I do that? Why did I say that? Why did I act that way? Why did I run away? Why did I put up those walls? Why did I lash out in fear? Why did I use sarcasm and hurt those other people? And all of a sudden, the moment you respond, literally within moments after your response, you begin to regret the choice and decision you made. Why? Because you have a neurological pathway in your brain that has created a, a highway, if you would, of subconscious response that is triggered by stress, by anxiety, and by the negative circumstances of life. But here's the good news. Through a 21-day process of renewing our minds, we can change the way we think and literally create a new pathway in our brain that becomes a new subconscious response. So from that moment on, once you establish that new pathway, think about this. The next time you experience stress or anxiety or negativity, your brain subconsciously will now have a choice it can revert back to the old path or now there is a new path that can be entrenched and ingrained in your brain so that it becomes the dominant pathway, the highway to holiness, the scripture calls it, where you can begin to choose subconsciously the things that you want to do that bring glory and honor to God. Now let me, let me talk about this 21-day process because this is really important. Dr. Caroline Leaf, through her research, has recognized something. She's recognized that there are a couple barriers that we face in this 21-day process. She said the first seven days are kind of the honeymoon phase, right? Have you ever embraced a new thought? Have you ever got excited about changing your life? I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to get in shape. I'm going to read the Bible every day. I'm going to be a witness for Christ. I'm going to love my wife. I'm going to, we're going to start doing date nights. We're going to, we're going to do family dinners together. And you, you were excited. You were passionate. You were fired up. And you meant it. Right? When you said you were going to do these things, you were going to do it. 100% of you was going to do the thing you said you were going to do. And about a week into it, you were excited. Man, you were seeing the fruit of it. You were seeing amazing things starting to happen. But on about day seven, <laughs> something happened. On about day seven, you hit a wall. On about day seven, you kind of hit a wall and all of a sudden you realize that, man, this was going to take discipline and it was going to take dedication. And all of a sudden something negative happened, something difficult happened, something challenging happened. Something stood in the way of the very thing you said you were going to do from this moment on to change your life for good. And what happens many times is when people meet that seven-day barrier, they abandon their thought. They abandon their choice. They abandon their new habit. And you know what happens? They lose what they tried to establish. It does not become a part of who they are. 
And after seven days, if you persevere through seven days, research has shown that 14 days, another seven days in, there's another barrier, there's another wall, there's another resistance, there's another challenge, there's another problem, there's another stressful situation that comes in your life. And on that 14 day mark, there's another challenge that you have to press through. And the challenge is if you're not on purpose, if you're not consciously thinking and recognizing, this is what I'm, I'm renewing my mind. See, you've got to think about what you're thinking about. One of the greatest capacities you have as a human being is you can think about what, you think, what you're thinking about. And you've got to think about what you're thinking about. And when you hit that wall at seven days, you've got to think about, I'm renewing my mind. I've got to press through this difficulty. When you hit that wall 14 days, you've got to consciously think about what you're thinking about. You've got to say, I'm renewing my mind. I've got to press through this barrier. I can't abandon this thought. I can't abandon the choices and decisions I'm making just because it's hard or just because it's difficult or just because something bad has happened to me. We're going to see in just a moment that those bad things are really what the Bible calls spiritual warfare, where the devil is coming against you to steal, kill, and destroy and keep you from experiencing the life that God has for you. And then after that 14-day marker, you got to press through. And here's the good news. Here's the good news. After 21 days of consistent focus, thought, and decisions, you have a new neurological pathway in your brain that will literally sustain itself. Now, here's the challenge. Here, here's, here's the problem that you have to overcome. It is scientifically, neurologically proven that if you don't maintain that thought and the choices and decisions that come with it for 21 days, if you abandon that thought after 18 days, you know what happens? That neurological pathway, which is made up of electrodes and protons that's being formed in your brain, they literally get reabsorbed into your brain. And instead of creating a new pathway, that pathway literally dissolves and disintegrates to nothing so that it literally becomes like you never had that thought before. Have you ever tried to lose weight and you started to lose weight and you did good for a week or you did good for two weeks and then you quit and then three months later you started, you were going to do it again and it was seemingly harder the second time? It was like, I've never done this before. I did it last time. I lost five pounds. I lost seven pounds. How come I can't press through this? Well, let me tell you why. Because every time you abandon that habit, that choice, and that thought, in less than a 21-day period, it gets reabsorbed into your brain. It no longer becomes a subconscious reality. And you have to relearn that truth and that thought again. But the good news is you can do it. You were created to prosper. You were created to renew your mind. You were created to walk in fellowship with God. You were created to do what Jesus did. You were created to live the life God has called you to live. You were created for His glory. Come on, somebody. You were created for His glory. Somebody type that in that chat box. You were created for His glory. You were created to live that kind of life. You're a soul-winning, disciple-making, devil-stomping Christian, and you're called with purpose and power, and you were created to live a life that advances the kingdom and reaches people for the glory of God. You were created for this, and you can do it. Let me give you our last thought today. Our last thought is simply about Jesus. Listen to what this last point says. Jesus describes this battle. I love the Word of God. Jesus describes this battle for our mind. He describes the strategy of the enemy. Satan wants to steal the seed of truth from your mind so that your life never bears fruit. Let me tell you something. God wants you to bear fruit. And as a matter of fact, Jesus said in John 15, Here it is, my Father glorified that you bear much fruit and that your fruit remains. God wants you to bear lasting fruit. So Satan attacks your mind. But you were created to win. So you've got to fight for your mind. You've got to fight for your thoughts. Because your thoughts are the key that unleash the life that God has called you to live. Look with me in Mark chapter 4. Let's listen to the words of Jesus. Jesus tells a parable. And he says, listen, a farmer went out to plant some seeds. And he scattered it across the field. And some of the seeds fell on a footpath and the birds came and ate it. And other seed fell on shallow soil with underlying rock. And the seed sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow. But the plant soon wilted under the hot sun. And since it didn't have deep roots, it died. And other seed fell among the thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants, so they produced no grain. And still other seed fell on fertile soil, and they sprouted and they grew, and they produced a crop 30, 60, even 100 times as much as had been planted. And then Jesus says this in verse 13. Then Jesus said, if you can't understand the meaning of this parable, how will you understand all the other parables? That's huge because this is what Jesus said. Jesus said the key to understanding everything that I'm going to say 
is rooted and grounded in this parable. I'm going to give you the key that unlocks every truth that I speak. I'm going to give you the key that unlocks every parable that I share because here's what you've got to understand. He defines it and he reveals it to us. Listen to what he says. So in verse 14, the disciples have come to Jesus. They said, Lord, help us to understand what this parable is all about. And then this is what Jesus says as he teaches it to them. He says, the farmer plants seed by taking God's word to others. So the seed that he's talking about is the word of God. God's word is the seed of the spirit that gives life to everything God wants to do in your life. Let me just tell you today, there's a seed for every need. Every need you have in your life, there is a seed from God's word to meet that need and produce the fruit that you need in your life. And then he goes on in verse 15. Look what he says. He says, the seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message only to have Satan come at once and take it away. Let's talk about that. The seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message only to have Satan come and steal it. Listen to this, at once and take it away. Let's be honest with ourselves today. How many times have you heard a sermon? How many times have you heard a message? How many times have you heard a, a worship song? And all of a sudden you thought, yes, I can do this. God is for me. God loves me. God wants to do amazing things. I can be healed. I can be delivered. I can be set free. I can do the things God's called me to do. And literally before that thought left your mind, another thought came. And that other thought was the thought of the enemy. It was Satan coming to steal that seed. And listen to it. Listen to me. Jesus said that seed fell on the footpath. That was the hard place. How many of you understand that we have already created dominant thought patterns in our lives that want to rebel and resist the Word of God? And when you hear that God heals and God delivers and God wants to prosper you and God wants to use you, there are some immediate thoughts that rise up in your mind that say, no, not you. You can't do this. Don't you remember your past? Don't you remember what you did yesterday? You've tried this before and it didn't work. You tried church. You tried Jesus. It didn't work for you. You're not a part of that promise. You are disqualified. This won't work for you. How many times have you heard something that stirred you up and before the thought even left your mind, you had another thought? They said, you're disqualified from that. That won't work for you. I wonder how many seeds have been stolen, stolen even in this service today. Even as you're listening to me, I wonder how many seeds have been stolen just as you're sitting there. Do you know why those, those seeds get stolen? Because you've got a hardened footpath. You've got dominant thoughts that are resistant to the Word of God. The Bible says the carnal mind or the carnal nature will never submit to God. It has to be crucified and your mind has to be renewed. Why? Because we are at war. And Satan wants to come and steal that seed and he uses the carnal thoughts of your mind to rob you of the truth of God's Spirit and His Word that wants to set you free. Now look at the next thing. Jesus said, "In the seed that fell on rocky soil represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy, but since they don't have deep roots, so that, that pathway to do what God's called them to do has not yet been firmly established. Their dominant thoughts are still in rebellion against God. Even though they've got some good thoughts, they're moving in the right direction. They're six days, they're seven days, they're ten days, and they're moving in the right direction. But listen to what he says happens here. He says, but since they don't have deep roots, they don't last long. They haven't established neurological pathways. It hasn't become a subconscious response yet. He says, so they fall away as soon as they have problems or are persecuted for believing God's Word. See, here's what happens. The moment you embrace the truth of Scripture, the enemy comes against that Word. And there are now problems and persecutions that arise because of the Word's sake. Because you're embracing truth, there is now a demonic attack against your mind. And all of a sudden, there are natural problems, there are financial problems, there are relational problems that come against you. There's persecution. People begin to mock you or make fun of you or people that were once your friend begin to push you away and say, well, I'm not going to be around some Jesus freak. And all of a sudden, there are problems and persecutions that arise every time time you start to renew your mind, every time you start to create a new habit, every time you start to set a new path, there are problems and persecutions that rise up in your face. I want you to recognize something. That is the demonic attack of the enemy. Satan is trying to steal the seed. you got to think about what you're thinking about. you got to cast down those thoughts and make every thought obedient to Christ. I'm going to choose the truth of Scripture because I believe that God is good and His will for me is good and holy and just. And I'm going to bear fruit. And then he goes on. Look what he says. 
He says, verse 18, And the seeds that fell among the thorns represent others who hear God's word, but they all too quickly, but all too quickly the message of God's word is crowded out by the worries of this life, by the lure of wealth, and by the desire for other things. So no fruit is produced. Think about that. The worries of life. Satan attacks you, and all of a sudden the worries of life begin to crowd out. I love that idea. It crowds out. You're, you're trying to establish a new thought. You're creating a new habit. You're choosing a new path. And all of a sudden the worries of life start to bombard your mind. How many know worry happens in your mind? Worry don't happen externally. Worry happens internally in your thoughts and you begin to worry. Satan bombards your mind with worry. Well, what if that doesn't work? This ain't going to work. What if this goes wrong? What if this goes wrong? What if this happens on your job? And all of a sudden you start worrying. And then the worries of life and the lure of wealth, right? The desire for wealth. All of a sudden we get sidetracked. Satan starts dangling things. Well, you need to make more money or you need to do this or you need to do that. And, you need, and all of a sudden our thoughts get sidetracked. And the pursuit of wealth, the desire for wealth, I'm just going to be honest with you, is one of the most luring desires of the enemy. That desire for more stuff and more things and more money. Nothing wrong with more. God wants to give you more. But if you don't get a pathway established in your mind that brings prosperity through the path that God intends to, you're going to spend your life chasing things that will never satisfy you. So Satan uses the lure and the desire, those thoughts. Man, I need more money. I need this. Oh, I can get a new job. Oh, I can get rich quick. And all of a sudden we abandon the truth of God. We abandon the habit and the new course that we're setting for our lives. And then he says, not only is it the worries of life, the lure of wealth, but just the desire for other things. We just start wanting stuff. Isn't it amazing how distracted we can be by the things that we want? I just want the new car, the new house, the new this. If I had this, I'd be happy. If I had this, those are all lies of the enemy that are intended to distract your mind and cause you to abort and abandon the truth of God's Word that you're beginning to establish in your mind so you can rewire your brain and recode your DNA so that your life can be lived for the glory of God. And then verse 20, I love verse 20. He says, and the seed that fell on good soil represents those who hear and accept God's word and produce a harvest, some 30, some 60, and some 100 times as much has been, as has been planted. I want to tell you something. You can persevere. You can endure. You can stay the course. You can renew your mind. And guess what? Your life will bear fruit 30, 60, 100 times more than what you've ever even imagined. Now let me give you a sobering thought today. You haven't really received the Word until you've renewed your mind for 21 days with that Word. You haven't really received the Word until you've renewed your mind for 21 days. It takes 21 days for that new neurological pathway. It takes 21 days to create a new subconscious response. It takes 21 days for your brain and body to catch up with the truths of God's Word that are in your soul, your mind, and your heart. And so today I want to challenge you. Let's fight for our minds. Let's fight the battle and win the war within so we can live the life and produce the harvest of God's Word that brings Him glory and allows us to live the life He's called us to live. God bless you today as you renew your mind.